Uh, do you think it was the financials that, that really played a role in, in her movement, McGill's movement here, and, and the backlash that some of these elite universities are now fa finally facing? I really do. It was the donors that were pulling pulling their donations. They, UPenn, for example, lost a one hundred million dollar donation that an, that an, an alum was going to give and said, "Because your institution is so anti-Semitic, I'm not going to give you that one hundred million dollar uh, endowment." So, of course, that called for it. But but I want to be clear about something. With McGill gone, this does not solve any issues. I'm glad she's gone because it's the right finally engaging in cancel uh, culture tit for tat against the left. So that, that's a good thing. But the, the institution itself has not changed. I'm convinced that you're still going to see anti-Semitism. You're still going to have Jewish students feeling unsafe, for example, on these college campuses. And all the speech regarding uh, what the left perceives as, as dangerous, that will be suppressed. And there'll still be calls for supporting Hamas, for example, and again, saying that Israel should, or from the river to the sea, Palestine shall be free, which is in reference to, to, to a genocidal uh, call to arms. But, but you're still going to see that. But at the end of the day, these institutions are far too left. They're far too woke. They're antithetical to Western civilization and Western values. That's the real problem with this. Uh, how you address that, that's going to be a long-term solution. It's got to be a societal approach, just not focusing on removing these woke liberal professors and, and presidents of universities. And Harvard protecting their president who's been caught plagiarizing some of her papers. Let's move on to this, though. The Senate is working on a Ukraine-Israel aid package with border improvements. We're not going to go there, though. I want to ask you about this. Maryland Democratic Senator Ben Cardin having to deal with this. A staffer since fired was caught filming a sex tape in the historic Senate hearing room. Capitol Hill police confirming to Newsmax that they're still looking into this. Uh, Congressman, what did you make when you heard the news that this happened? No issues that I won't talk about. Well, I was absolutely dis disgusted by that, but it shows you that the left holds our institutions in complete disdain and, di and disregard. There's no respect from the left of the institutions that, that, have, been, that have been standing. So this disrespect is not surprising to me. Uh, and let's not forget, this same staffer is the one that told Max, Max Miller, my good friend, fellow congressman from, he's from Ohio, he walked up to him on the um, in the halls and said, uh, "Free Palestine," knowing that Max Miller was a Jewish member of Congress. Congress. So, and I want so to ask staffers you, had problems. Can I follow up with just a question? Because he's disputing that that happened. This aide is, is is denying that that happened. Can can you confirm that that actually did happen? You saw it. Yeah, so I did not see that it happened, but if Max Miller told me that it happened, I have to agree. I have to believe that it did happen. And it's it's interesting because Capitol Police have cameras everywhere in the in the halls. Uh, they could easily focus in and figure out if that was a staffer that had a confrontation with Max Miller. They could know in about five minutes if they pulled the right footage. Uh, but again, this staffer's already gone, uh, no longer working here. But again, the disdain and the animosity for the institutions does not surprise me. This staffer just got caught in an act of disrespect. You know, Congressman, you mentioned the security cameras. I almost hate to ask this next question. Were there security cameras in this hearing room? Is Capitol Police forced to go through that right now? There's security cameras everywhere, um, to my knowledge, everywhere except the bathrooms. I mean, especially after after the 6th, there, there's cameras everywhere. Um, and, and it's just not in the Capitol building. D.C. is one of the most surveyed uh, or one of the biggest surveillance cities in the world. Uh, it's, it's amazing where the cameras are. You'll When you walk around, you'll see lampposts that you think are, are lampposts. They're not. They're actually cameras. They're just very well disguised. Yeah. Do you think there'll be criminal charges? That's the big discussion right now. Should this aid be charged? Well, no, unfortunately, I don't think there will be criminal charges. There should be. Had that been a Republican staffer doing that, there would be criminal charges. But this goes back to that double standard of justice we have in the United States, especially here in D.C. Remember that, that Representative Bowman pulled a fire alarm. That's a felony offense. He also pulled a fire alarm to delay votes. He was obstructing the business of Congress. That's a felony offense. But the D.A. here in Washington, D.C. gave him a sweetheart deal and let him plead guilty to a misdemeanor, and he got some community service, for example. So if you're, a, if you're a supporter of the ruling regime, there's a completely different set of criminal justice standards and, and uh, criminal, criminal justice for you. If you're a member of the general public, there's a different standard. If you're a conservative, there's an even worse standard for you. So we actually have a three-tier criminal justice system. This guy just happens to fall in the one that's favored by the establishment. So I'd be shocked to see if there's any charges. And if there are, it'll be weak and watered down.